Everybody, welcome to another installment of Show to Be with Mike G, the show of life, the show of science, film production, Russia, Anthony Bourdain, and so much more with today's guest, the amazing personality and founder of Zamir, peacemaker of vodka, Mr. Zamir Gata. He was in town in Austin, Texas, doing a bit of promotion for his new vodka made from wheat. It's a brilliant vodka. Never thought I would say it, but to sit and chat with this man who has lived such a life behind the camera, behind the scenes, in front of the camera, in front of the scenes, the quintessential fixer, and we all got to know and love him via no reservations with Mr. Anthony Bourdain. But this latest chapter of peace, drinking and sipping, will be the best chapter yet as Zamir shares his wonderful vodka with us all. So really a nice, philosophical, peaceful, loving chat with the man himself, and thank you Lamar Romero of Dragon Spirits for bringing him along and touring him through the States. I hear it was quite the party. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this great chat with Zamir Gata. I think the first time, the more I think about it, the more I realize it happened in Iraq, yeah. which was in 1980. I was an intern from the Soviet, Soviet mm-hmm. 1980. Pa- power plant, right? Ministry yeah. of Power and Electrification. Okay. They needed cheap labor, like students, yeah. to be sent to developing countries. So by pure like coincidence or whatever, I was dispatched to Kurdistan, which is still is north of Iran, yeah. Iraq, I'm sorry, at the hydropower station, which the Soviet engineers had already built, constructed yeah. for the Iraqis, with the help of other you know countries like Yugoslavia and, you know, uh, East Germany, and Saddam Hussein started the war four months after I landed in that part of the world. Oh. So for me, as Yazimir, the name, which is more like a slogan, yeah. you have your beautiful name Mike, he has the beautiful name Lamar. When people called me Yazimir, because that's how my parents wanted me to be mm-hmm. bringing this message, which I think I started to realize much later in my life, it was more like a slogan. Like when someone calls you Sputnik, Okay. At some point in your life, you will start thinking, maybe I should go to space. Right? <laughs> yeah. So at some point in my life, and the first thing happened when Ir- Iraqis started the war, Iranians started to bomb us, the pilots, hydropower yeah. station, with the help of American phantoms. Because if you remember 1979, uh, the Shah of Iran mm. ousted, and the new guys, whoever they were, the young rebels, right. they still used American right. high-sophisticated right. yeah. weapons to bomb Iraq. So our hydropower station was a strategic object. So we had to survive. To cut a long story short, after a month of this bomb starting, yeah. most of the Russians, whoever was still there, were evacuated. Four engineers who were my father's age, and I was 22, I think, told me, Zamir, there are three ways to survive under this situation. We are on the contract. We can't go right. out of it. We have to work. First, as you know, it's Muslim country. There are no women available for whatever you know reason. Yeah. There is no booze available. So the, the choice was kind of limited. Either you make love to a donkey. I said immediately, <laughs> no. So like, <laughs> not to question. lose your sanity. I said, not even <laughs> to be considered. Yeah. You marry a local Kurdish woman, but you have to stay and you know make a living here with okay. them because otherwise there's no chance. I said, probably not. I have a girlfriend in Moscow at that time. Or start producing moonshine because this is the only way to keep your sanity kind of I, intact because yeah. you can't think about it every day that well in five you minutes need the, i could the be calmness, bombed. right the alcohol has some great effects one of them being it lets the i wasn't off. really aware of that because i was 22 maybe yeah. a beer once a week uh-huh. i wasn't really a drink at that point or something but these four guys kind of brought me into that so being engineers one of them was a chemical engineer they quickly explained how it could be done yeah. at home like in the room like this it's only two ingredients it's not like a secret i'm selling you right I mean, right smart That's people can make stuff. use of it at home it's like sugar mm-hmm. water you mix it up the mash sits for a week ideally then you start filtering it with the carbon or right, whatever you right. have at hand and then depending on how 
thirsty you are, the longer you wait, the More. smoother the product will uh, be. Okay. Normally, they couldn't wait. They could. Because once <laughs> another bombing happens, yeah. our only dilemma was how quickly you could get, get back home and do a little bit of a tasting yeah. and have a conversation to keep our minds more in place, not to lose it. You don't have families, mm. you don't have future, you don't know what tomorrow will be like. Right. But you do make money. Well, At sure. that point, I realized that money is not everything. I was paid like a minister of Soviet Union because yeah. I was in the war front. They added like 30%, which we called grave coffin money. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, meaning that you may not need them, but at least that's the motivation to stay in the war zone. Yeah. So, so in a way, the solace, the peace, the harmony that's comes exactly from what right in the middle. I started to realize, so I was with some of my Jewish background, which I couldn't really spell out, yeah. being in a Muslim country. Because in Russia, when at that point you still had the passport asking for a nationality, it was called Crimean ethnic group Karaites. Oh, okay. No one really knew that there was a deep Jewish background yeah. from the religious point of view, but I now went to synagogue at that point, never visited, so I wasn't really aware what it was like. And a little bit of a Turkish language, very interesting combination of different cultures from Crimea, which is now, as you probably know, right. Massive because of Mr. Putin yeah. annexed and brought back to Russia, which is another story. We won't discuss politics. So I realized that being kind of a Jew mm. in between Orthodox Russians, like my guys, comrades, Muslim community, yeah. both Iraqis who are Arabs and Kurds who were more like Farsi, you know, Iranian yes, right, culture. Right. They all had to speak the same language, which was English. That's why I was there to translate. But more importantly for me, to socialize after work. Yeah. The Muslims don't drink. The Russians impose toasting. And they told them, guys, hey, we need to find a solution. Let them drink whatever they like, Iraq or water. Iraq, yeah. Don't impose vodka because it's not right. You yeah. are at their home. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. That's right. And don't squeeze, don't grab the women by, you know, Right. Pussies or be, something. I'm sorry. Be polite. Quoting someone who is much more famous now. <laughs> Don't touch Don't them. Don't do as you the president do does. In Russia, right? we <laughs> never had that notion of sex harassment because normally we think Russian women really enjoy attention. Yeah, part of the culture, but I yeah. told them in Iraq, the women can't be touched. You don't can, can look into the eyes because yeah. that's already harassment. Right. So that what took me a mission more than cross promoting the peacemaking to understand how to bring these three people, three different cultural audiences into yeah. one party that they understand the language at the business hours and after that they still socialize right they don't call wow, the black guy or the sure. kind of arab guy or the kind of uh, uh indian guy because we had different nations yeah fish. almost like a unification thank you right bringing these peace was together. part of it but it yeah. was more about enlightening those who didn't know much about russian history and yeah. only thought all russians are like drunkards i said yeah. okay look at myself Maybe I'm not ethnic Russian, but I represent the country. Right. I'm Russian citizen. That's so, right. citizen. Yeah. so we have amazing cultural roots, yeah. like movies, like theater, ballet, which cross-promote Russian history. So forget about the stereotypes of Russians only are good at getting drunk. Yeah. There could be a moderate, uh, limited consumption. In a way, you're, you become a spokesman for the whole country, right? Well, I had to because that was yeah. my mission. That's what, to keep I mean, an eye on everyone and basically keep peace. Around you, the, you are the PR mechanism for Russia in this. Omar, if you don't mind, please make the notes because this man really <laughs> outsmarts me in many ways. Because I sometimes don't know how to, how to say, incorporate some of the talents I think I have yeah. and monetize them. Yes, yes. This guy, look at this guy. It's that's he's how it my works. guru. I'm like learning. It's only the last 24 hours, but I'm already learning a lot. That's about the, the best part about this, and this is one of the reasons I love talking to people that have had yeah. such stories. Right, we get to learn. So, okay, this is, seems, I, I can feel how this interest in A little bit of backstory vodka, for you absolutely. to get connection to today, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of where the piece starts. It's where the vodka piece starts. But for you, I know that before all of this, you studied English in yes. Moscow, right? I think in Moscow. Teachers and, training college, right? Yeah. And you, I just imagine as a kid, you were very much into film. You were very much in the arts is that the kind of upbringing it's that you have good that you bring me back to that story i was probably eight years old yeah and my cousin who was at the very prestigious moscow film academy as a student oh, of wow. to direct mm -hmm. so eisenstein and tarkovsky yeah. were his icons that's how i learned it from yeah. him he is still alive in tashkent Uzbekistan. 
He's uh, nine years older than I. So Akhror, that's his name, approached me and said, hey, you like ice cream? I said, yeah, why? You know what? It was very expensive at that point. No one can really afford that right. you know, in Soviet Union. I'll buy you two favorite chocolate ice cream like that size, uh-huh. which was the biggest. And I'm like a sweet alcoholic more than what, <laughs> by the way. He knew that and said, I need your talent to help me with my diploma work to play a young boy like your age, okay, like an outcast from the society, like he can't find communication with home, with school. He loves pets. I didn't. Yeah. But you will pretend you like pets and I'll take you for like two hours shoot only for his diploma work mm-hmm. in the pet flea market. Allegedly, I'm looking for a friend, like a pet. Yeah. And I get one. And that's the dream of that young boy to find someone to communicate with. I said, okay, two ice creams. But I tell him, give me one now so I know like you uh, won't disappear. Good move, yeah. You know, Learning how to some, negotiate some at Jewish eight years old. So definitely, you know, Brilliant. And the second one on accomplishment. I yeah. said, okay. Any contract? I said, no, I'm fine. So <laughs> that was my first experience to get into the set, yeah. to like it. The cameraman on the roof saying, take one, I yeah. go. I'm afraid to touch that, 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 that dog, which he found as the best friend. I said, uh-huh. Ahor, can we find a smaller version? Like I can really just <laughs> Hold you it know, in your, yeah. put on a lap and kind of pat on something. So it took us like 10 takes to get yeah. to the right dog, to the right interaction that I don't feel scared. Yeah. And the camera, you remember, they, they were rolling and it was 1964, I think, with the cameraman with this, not Kodak, they couldn't wow. put Kodak with some yeah. film. And said, Zamir, we don't have enough. I'm a student. Yeah. We really need to make it before we lose the cameraman with the right. thing. So take eight was the last one, and we finally made it. Since that time, the whole fascination of that movie, yeah. Hollywood kind of got into me. In a way, I just smelled that. And luckily for me, when the Soviet Union collapsed, and I got exposed to most film, like Russian Hollywood, yeah. and got to know people from U.S., in many ways, like meeting De Niro, working with uh, Billy Crystal on yeah, his uh, yeah, midnight train to thing, Moscow. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, 1989. I was like, wow, is it happening to me like within my lifespan, born as a commie guy yeah. who was made believe that we will, all, we will all live under communism after 1980 until they said, sorry, we fucked up. There's no more communism. Capitalism will come soon, so get ready. Yeah. Most people are still stuck with these communist ideals sure. they were born with. Luckily for me, I was like 30, so I managed to switch tracks yeah. to become more capitalistic and make use of some of the talents I can bring up to the markets. Do you, I get the sense you're very capt. I'm, I'm captivated right now, right? I know you. you have had a pretty illustrious career in film, documentaries. You're a friend of Russia, someone who's improved the perspective <laughs> for the Western world, right? Like single-handedly. Yeah, like all of these things. So as a kid. Call me Ambassador Zemir. Ambassador like. Zemir. Perfect, you. perfect. Do you like the attention? Do you like the room, the people that are clamoring around your every word? Like an actor? Not really. I tell you why. Since Billy Crystal wanted me to be in his uh, production yeah. as a corrupted matter dean, like as an actor, uh-huh. and uh, the director, Paul Fletcher, I think, you know what? We really need Zemir in setting up the show more than, you know, we could hire anyone for yeah, this. It yeah. was like two line, 30 seconds, maybe. I would have become a movie star if it happened. So yeah. for me, I'm more like believing in karma. So I wasn't destined to be an actor, uh-huh. which is great because you, you have limited space. Everyone wants to direct you. Yeah. But you can be on your own, basically. Mm. You know, maybe Woody Allen can afford it, but not everyone else. I know. <laughs> yeah. And like, so it's good that I tra- tra- transitionally smooth into Mr. Fixer. Ah. Like I set up the other people's life stories and movies mm-hmm. as part of it. Then I wanted to do my own documentaries, which we finally did with my wife. Right. And just to give you an idea, the people who really captivated me, as you just mentioned, people with physical and mental disabilities. Because, first of all, they don't get attention, as you said, right. and they don't need it sometimes. Yeah. And I started to think, well, maybe there is something in their life I missed in my life. So why don't I try to find the right characters and make the stories about them uh-huh. and learn with them that there is a totally different, like, you know, every metal has, coin has two sides, right? right? right. The opposite, the, the sunny side and the shady side, or yeah. darker side. So that's what we normally forget. So in the morning, you wake up, you have bacon and eggs, you're taken care of, you have a beautiful home, mm. people love you, you do what you like. But think about those who are deprived to have most of it, yeah. and then you will never complain. So for me, when people start complaining, like, oh, capitalism is bad, communism is bad, like, 
my wife got pregnant. The the girlfriend is not giving me a blowjob. I'm sorry. It's like you know, an American. Oh, you can you fucking can, you say can whatever like, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I forgot. We're in a free world, so right. don't complain. Think about other people who have zero yeah. chance to make anything in life. Because in Russia, that's what a metaphor for me. The people with physical disability. Yeah. Uh, I met a girl. Do you have time for that? Please. Yeah. Who captivated me, Ksenia? She was 17 when she was a beautiful girl. A month before graduation, she had a dive in a river uh-huh. near Moscow in Babushka's uh, dacha countryside. And unfortunately for her, broke the seventh uh, spine of her band. It's like day and night, overnight. So oh my gosh. her father, famous doctor, took her out to consult with many doctors. There's nothing they could do. So she's stuck in a wheelchair, right? Mm. And she's 17. What life is all about? She managed to pull herself together. I met her like three years later, but mm-hmm. that's her story, which captivated me. And within that three years before I met her, she succeeded to become a student living separately from the parents in the first Moscow-based social institute for the disabled people. Because yeah. normally in Russia, there were no ramps. There was no way for them to get out of homes. In this dormitory, they could have access. So at no least accessibility to the whatsoever. Yeah. Zero accessibility. Mm. She never complained. Ksenia. She started to do the uh wheelchair fencing and became third in the world because she was motivated to make her voice heard i can do it you know secondly uh a young man about her age yuri joined the russian national team where she was a member as a volunteer to do a massage he was a trained Uh sir fell in love with the girl that's how i met her someone told me a story of a girl in love with someone who is part of her team i said wow what a story so then she explained what happened before yeah. and i was lucky when yuri courted her like took her out mostly carrying her by hands because there was no way she could access anything right right even like 10 years ago uh they married we filmed that marriage the first waltz when she's in his hands you know like think of american movies right, right. there is the furls dance but the girl can't dance because she can't you know right physically do it he was doing it like you know in his lap more importantly for me and for the story she managed to get pregnant though doctors told me that's impossible, it's impossible right yeah and gave birth to a baby wow. so that's what we were filming but that was the my third film we ran out of money me and my wife and in russia like everywhere else you can't really get the post-production funds so yeah. i still have this dream it's 40 hours of footage so you had the for footage me. yeah but i still had no money to complete so Crazily for me, I thought, well, maybe I start some business like vodka. Maybe I'll make right. some money to go back to the story. So that's why now I'm stuck, but I am motivated to continue this. That's vodka an amazing thing, thing to make the money to make the story. There are lost albums out there. You know what I mean? There are things that interesting. They, they, I never thought about. Like that, the Beach Boys way. had a lost album. I remember the, the Beach Boys. Had, like, I didn't they, know that they had that album. Yeah, they had a, stolen. a lost album. It's, that's similar for it, me. But just it's like, so cool because then it becomes mythical. It becomes something. So this is the thing. I, I, I love these ideas that finally come to fruition. It just happens at different times. Right. So perhaps vodka, which was your That's introduction where I to hope peace, right? Something which is not totally understood as a peacemaking message. Right. And not many people look at me like, are you bullshitting? Like, what kind of peacemaking you can get of drinking your vodka? I said, you oh, know what? It's the, it's at the core of You don't think about it. Like, yeah, yeah. it's not about to get drunk. It's about just to start a conversation. That's right. I open the bottle and I don't need it anymore. Because for me, it just keep you and my friend Lamar entertained Absolutely. and getting your attention by chin chinning and toasting. Yeah. That's how we continue the it's conversation. It's the great facilitator. Alcohol. That's the better sipping word. Sipping is, is a great way to facilitate. We don't ideas, get drunk. Innovation. We don't need to get drunk. Right. We, we need a conversation. To. Right. Lamar, now it's getting clear and clear, I think. Good. It gets clear every sip. So this motivation this kind of inclination to give back to capture stories that people don't maybe they don't have the capacity to do on their own so you said you taught as well in, in that's cool education. for five years is it the same yeah. kind of, of course piece to give back? yeah yeah to share the experience with young people because it's all about enlightenment yeah i tell you one thing which strikes me as totally unbelievable mm. give me your like best shot how many americans have travel passports to allow them to go outside of the u.s wow it's a great question what uh less than what would 10 be per- your, like less than 10 percent? less yeah. unfortunate 10 even nine really which means that americans are oversaturated with the junk 
they yeah. are delivered over TV, That's right. over food, over booze, because yeah. they think going to take a McDonald's with French fries basically like going to France. Right. Why do oh, I mean yeah. You know, no, not palm free. No. When someone, I don't want to use the names because right. they're very smart and professional people, create a bubble and saying vodka could be made of something. Yeah in France, which has only the wine history right. and beautiful food history, but not vodka. People who are not intelligent or sophisticated would, would buy that because mm. for them it doesn't really matter. As long as it's beautiful, expensive, sexy, mm. that's how they're trained to be consumers. Right. For me, I'm trying to create intellectual property. Something will make people think first mm. before spending money. Does yeah. that make some sense? It Maybe it's counterproductive. Sure. Maybe well, people I say, Samir, it's too expensive to buy vodka. No matter what message you tell them, why it's good. Yeah. I strongly believe that the more you enlighten people, that's why it took me five years at school to understand that maybe I need another hundred years, which I didn't have, right. to continue the enlightenment. <laughs> so I switched to facilitating thing, a shortcut, which sometimes is not that short as you think. Sure. But I honestly believe that vodka as Russian brand, as something Russian are famous for, starting from the Absolutely, old czar yeah. times, and with some new message, which is, I think, very contemporary mm. and meaningful. Because look at it. The way I was brought up, we didn't have food, we didn't have clothes, we didn't have anything. No Western music, nothing right. in the Soviet time. The only thing that they would relay over the TV and radio, at least we have a fragile piece. This is worth it. Mm. Your generation, next generation, would live a much better life. Right. Which kind of happened, not because they wanted it, I delivered a much better lifestyle for me and my kids than my parents could. They yeah. did the best they could, but they couldn't create an opportunity for me to travel abroad because it was Iron Curtain. Now, with my kids having green cards and have an option to yeah. travel and do what they like, not what Mr. Putin wants them to do because right. it's the same on slavery. Listen to me. Go this way. I don't want you to go that way. This time is over. That's why for me to go back into the Soviet Union time is no way. Mm. I don't want to be a slave of someone. So you've... You've been able to evolve. You've been able this to break the change. This is my freedom, spirit yeah. of freedom. Well, it's me, weird. So, that's how I cross fertilize the land. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's not like sperm. Don't look at me. I want to impregnate no, you no, I physically. Get it. it's I'm like, trying to give you food for thought. Right. I'll be gone tomorrow. It's, but you will probably yeah. you know, tell Lyric, do you have kids? I do not. But, but I get, to, I get the point. Unless you feel you really want right, to, right, right. and you it, want to share something. This right? is your anthem. This is my exactly right. Like this, this is, is my something baby. can sing, people can sing along to. People can Thank share. You. So it is, yeah, in a way, a legacy. I know you have kids, as you mentioned, but but it's this a way is to do that. a longer shot right. for me. It's like look at it like you know Americans like the commercializing or everything. Look yeah. for me. It's like the biggest investment I'm doing. It's like my flush, uh, my blood, flesh, and sweat yeah. incorporated into the spirit which i hope if i'm gone scott my partner in, yeah, in the yeah. honey falls distillery lamar and people who trust me and believe in me like in four states now yeah. where i cross promoted and they believe in that in like missouri in michigan in upstate new york they would continue that right. and they don't need me for that they just need my brand which i incorporated already and yeah. it belongs to me and my kids yeah, so that's why I'm in America because you respect the copyright, you respect the that's, that's a great in Russia. Point, yeah. No one gives a fuck. Yeah, the moment I would start thinking about vodka business in Moscow, next day I will see a couple of hoods coming yeah. to me and say, Zamir, I think for about a million dollar cash now, we will keep you safe and protected. Oh, right, right. That how about I have like 100 bucks available? Yeah, no, no, if you are involved in booze prostitution or drugs you mm. must be a millionaire because otherwise people normal people don't think about it. yeah well there so there's these different phases I, I always kind of think about how our journey brings us to a place where we're making where we're doing something that's not easy making booze is fraught with regulation it's not fraught only with complication all, all of that stuff you know but you had a good teaching stint paying things forward helping enable and empower people to live a larger life right and you need to get the attention. That's the, that's yeah. the biggest thing. You know, attention deficit is not just a, a kind of a medical term for me. Right, right. Most people are oversaturated with their own stuff. They don't mm -hmm. want to listen about dramatic stories. Right. Handicapped people, a girl without legs giving birth. This is too much. I really want to have like, a, uh, what do you call this uh, favorite thing, like a, a Game of Thrones or right, right. Sky-Fi or like Star Trek. 
because that gives you a dreamland thing. So for me, it's in a way a metaphor for a Star Trek of that generation. Yeah. This is something the young people could start dreaming. Okay, maybe after the sip, mm. I feel I'm a better man tomorrow. Yeah. I can probably share something I know in the same way as Zemir is sharing his life experience. And maybe people will listen to me because I will toast. Well, this always is a, a giving you a chance to think about what yeah. you do, but it gives me a chance to concentrate on my next message. Well, when I think about the, again, the, the evolution of kind of this, this track that brought us here this afternoon, it feels like, and I know, and I'm sure it's been talked to death, there's no doubt, but being a guy who likes to facilitate from behind the scenes, right? That's what I in, enjoy more than being in front of right, the camera, Right, producing, by the way. directing, all of these things. Never thought about being in front of the camera yeah. until, I'm sorry, I give you like another chance, until Tony Bourdain stepped into my life I was in 2001. Ask. I'm reading your mind, man. Yeah, thank you. Don't tell anyone. It's just like, <laughs> it's part of my job. So, I'm sorry. I know that I don't trust your next call. Oh, no, I'm it's just good. Trying try to save your time. Because <laughs> I know you want me to, like, to warm up a little bit with, with toasting and, you know, sipping and kind of other stuff. It doesn't distract me. Tony Bourdain stepped into my life in February 2001 yeah. and impregnated me. Yeah. Emotionally. Right. He was, was a rebel. For that he one. was a okay. rebel. I met him at the airport, you know, friends of our friends from New York called me and said, hey, someone fucked up that pre-production for Tony's first time travel. Right. He's not a very famous man. He's a nice guy. So could you help him? There's not much money we can offer. Yeah. You'll need to rent an apartment. Normally, it's like, you know, with Billy Crystal, with everyone else, you stay in five-star hotel. Right, right. Here it was like, you have a rented apartment. I said, okay, it's not about the money, Alex in Petersburg. Maybe this cook, the chef, will give me something as food for thought. I never worked with, you know, yeah. Barbara Walters, right, Diane different, Sawyer, different with deal. total different kind of girls, $5 million smile, all bullshit kind of conversation. Right. Oh, yeah. This guy with mindset thought should be for real, like, you know, 25 years in the kitchen. Yeah, it's a gritty first dude. First time outside of US. Yeah, let's meet. So we meet up and the first night we have a production meeting with two bottles of vodka, not Zamir vodka at that time. And he tells me openly, Zamir, you know what? It's my first time in the kind of capacity of being on camera talent. Yeah. And I don't feel like you do breaking the ice kind of thing with wow. people you never met. So I'm kind of uncomfortable. He's a little shy? Is that, is that the exactly. right word? Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to use this word. You right. use that. Yeah. Insecure is not the right word. More yeah. shy. Sure. No. Ex drug addict. Ex, yeah, right. You know, well junkie. documented, yeah. He never like kind of hide it from anyone. And no, he told he... me his story. I said, wow. And now you're in this new capacity. So what can I do? He said, you know what? Why don't you step out from the behind the scene yeah. and be my co-host? Because people relate to you. And then I step in because ah. it will be easier for me right. after you break. I'm like an icebreaker. And you, you probably way. help him, right? You're exactly. Kind of like I said, well, I don't really care if you need me in this capacity. I don't mind. It's For me, it's like natural. Sure. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. So that's how we started. So I was breaking the ice in that St. Petersburg scene. We met the first time two guys on the ice fishing in the freezing cold yeah. and that's how we kind of conversation started we got a shot of vodka to warm them up etc so tony made a very interesting impact on me the guy who never who never had people dominating his life if you mm -hmm. know that for me he was like a real rebel uh, something right. i couldn't kid, afford sure yeah kind of punk hippie whatever yeah. you call it with amazing music scene knowledge, like, yeah. you know, Ramones, uh, uh -huh. Stevie Ramon. I heard about them, but through him, I started thinking about why. Yeah. Let me listen to them and get this, you know, lyrics and stuff. About Eisenstein Potomkin movie, I said, wow, this guy, like, looks like a punk, but so intelligent. Right, academic. So smart. Mm -hmm. And we connected yeah. and became friends. So when he became a star two years later with Travel Channel Show, his producers call me and say, Zamir, you choose any country you want if yeah. you're available. Tony wants you to kind of come back into your capacity of, you know, field producer and on-camera talent because you feel, he feels much more comfortable when you're with him right. with this kind of unscripted story. Everything is unscripted. Sure, sure. Once we have a lunch with two bottles of vodka, normal. Unscripted. When people ask me, is it like <laughs> fake? I said, you don't need, no. you don't want to use this word because Tony is not the guy who likes fakes. Mm -hmm. Everything is his own life. He's doing it like he wants to get drunk, he'll get drunk. He doesn't want to get drunk, but he'll still drink two bottles, right. which is part of his chemistry and my chemistry. That's another reason we connected. And we talk about everything else. Bruce Willis, space, bullshit, men, okay. women, life, jokes. That's what I love about his show. Yeah. There's no script. We only know what kind of setups we need. That's right. Russian food, Russian recipes, 
Russian lifestyle, Russian oligarchs, Russian poor people, yeah. bistros, eateries. We know what kind of segments we need with segment producer we discussed before. That's what I facilitate access-wise only, yeah. so that they give the second camera a chance to film food being you know produced right. and, and prepared, but nothing else. See, that's the thing. This is that's these are the kinds of conversations I like to have. Thank so you. We've got our setup. Thank you. But there is no there's script. no script. <laughs> <laughs> if it is not abundantly clear no. at this point <laughs> that we're just moving in a direction, exactly. moving forward. Well, so something that I think this is important to talk to, and you could call it politics, but I don't really think it's politics. I think it's just so, the way that pop culture is kind of right now. How do you, go, go ahead. No, yeah, go so ahead. we're in a really interesting state. So I grew up in the, the 80s. Tell that, me more about your background. Yeah, well, so the, I always got this sense of paranoia from the states right because there's, there's <laughs> star wars i it's know in, exactly what you mean yeah and it is and it's it's just it's in i was watching some old episodes of the twilight zone from the 80s it's there it's in tv movies so i just it grew is. up with that kind of subtle fear this little tapping on the shoulder very very subtle uh -huh. right and that kind of dissipated so russia for the, most of my adult life has been out doing their own thing right exactly how does it feel now you left russia right i'm to, in transition i'm kind of my family is still there, unfortunately. Yeah, but ultimately, but, still trying to embrace the, of course. The, the American lifestyle or whatnot, right? The, <laughs> well, the, not really American lifestyle. I would call it still American dream. It's not yes, that everyone right, believed right. in that these days. Yeah. But I do believe because you don't have artificial obstacles. That's right. It took me like a week, 250 bucks, to set up my own company yeah. to incorporate my brand, my intellectual property with the Tony's help, right, right. protected, and I can do which is not prohibited. That's in right. Russia, it would take me probably five years and everyday conversation with the hoods about so, so the now, so extortion money. That was, that, again, that was very, very clear. Entrepreneurialism is still pretty unfettered like in terms of, of the states. There's not yeah. a lot of obstacles. How do you feel about what seems to be a very, very weird underlying relationship between a president that's not really representing us, to be honest, and then someone that is from where you're from. I mean, is that, do you Don't find take that it personally. Cautious? No, no, no. The book which impressed me most once I started reading books from the West, yeah, which were yeah. not allowed, and luckily in Iraq, I got hold of it. No a kidding. friend of a friend, I think a German guy who worked for this hydropower station, brought it from Europe. It was uh, Once Flew Over the Cuckoo's oh, Nest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that character, then I, I watched the movie afterward. Mm. I mean, not immediately. Uh, Jack, uh, Jack Nicholson, Nicholson was yeah. playing. He was the guy who opened my eyes in a way that his search for freedom, no matter in medical institution or in the state. As a metaphor. For me, the way, state right? was yeah. a metaphor of that nurse yeah, yeah. who was trying to control everything in her own way yeah. and keep the, if you remember, the acutes, the chronicles in different words, like rich people for me, poor people, middle class, yeah. and then giving them the chance to meet for a short while to say, oh, I don't go, I don't want to go up. I, don't, I want to go down. I don't want to go to the acutes. I want to go to the chronicles. Yeah. That was the only choice. For me, this guy, with the help of the chief, who broke that thing into the wall, right, and made that access. Yeah. So for me, it's still metaphor. That's what oh, I'm man. still living. It's like an animal farm, kind of, right? Exactly. Yeah. So do you think that, is it problematic? Do you think it that is. we're, it seems, Every it's day just weird, in my right? Life, yeah. When I wake up, didn't hear that today. I'm staying at Lamar's five star hotel, but don't advertise that. It's very <laughs> exclusive for intellectuals only. I imagine with it's some booze facilities. Not everyone can afford it, by the way. So for me, I'm still squeezing the communist slaves, I would say, DNA yeah. out of me because I still wake up with some paranoia. It's Something like Something is going wrong. The world is yeah. not perfect. Trump wants this. Putin wants this. Once I find the solution. So look at it. This mm. is the solution. Vodka is a solution. It's water mm. and spirit, correct? Chemical. You don't sure. need to. It is to actually be. a solution. Yeah, thank things. Things. Yeah. So it's not like a metaphor. I mean it. So, guys, welcome to the world of mindful drinking, very sober sink. Uh, say, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, very sober mind of uh, tasting it, yeah. which means like you could sip it. It's not about getting wasted. It's about open your mind right. and soul and heart to meet new people, incorporate them into your life and share something together. I hope after our conversation, yeah. you will have new ideas tomorrow, how you want to move into so, different ways. He definitely already 
got impregnated. Look at Lamar. Yeah. He's not the guy you met before. I'm I sure. landed. Yeah. Look at him. You know, he's a totally different man. <laughs> now he's thinking about expansion. Like world is no longer a limit to him. Right. Why only tequila? Why only vodka? There could be much more interesting infused there is. cocktails, which we'll discuss. So, with him. so let me summarize it in this way, and you tell me if, if this is kind of what you, a way to look at this. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not about what confines are around us and the things that we find maybe bring us down or should worry us, right? Maybe it's not about that. Maybe it is about elevating our consciousness, having a sip, taking time away from that and realizing yeah. we're all people and we all can do And we have a lot things. to share. That's right. So this is the symbol I use to get your attention only, to share the toes by saying to women, yeah. to love, to friendship, to parents. So you start thinking, wow, when did I call my parents last time? That's right. Fuck me. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That's a great point. Before I forget, yeah. I'm like six-year-old. This is something for you. Now oh, time, now dolls, time yeah. to interview you. What symbol do you read here? Do you need to touch it? Tell me. I'll tell you. Which symbol do what's I read? in it? What, why do you think I bring this little church to so, you? D- what are they, what's the, name for the proper name for this? Well, first of all, it's called Matryoshka. It's like a nest doll. Uh-huh. It's kind of a symbol of Russia. Yeah. And painted. And it's like a chain. That's right. So could you connect for me? Why do well, you think I Well, that's an interesting it? one. Yeah, it's uh, like your homework. So what's so, your initial okay. reaction? All right, this is good. This is interesting. So these these are the dolls of which you open up. They have smaller dolls within, mm-hmm. right? So Not this one. This one doesn't. no space. Okay. But normally it's like normally they're quite, different size. Quite big. 10, 15, whatever. Well, and the chain, like keychain. And the chain. Well, I hope that the, the chain, I mean, because normally you think about these dolls and you can break them open, right? Exactly. And then break away from the chain. So it may be a second generation, a third generation. Exactly. Yeah. So this is your homework. And once I leave, you will start thinking every day, why has Samir brought me this piece? Maybe there Thank is you. something else I want to do in life. Yeah, it's amazing. Sky story. is your only limit, I can tell. I don't give it to everyone. It's I just like it's the instincts great. I have it's, about it's you great. and your talents, Yeah. which could save the world. So now talking about the mission, yeah. unless people like you, me, and Lamar who is doing something not just for the money, money kind right. of thing, it's too boring. With the passion. Once you have enough, you lose your drive. Mm-hmm. You have a house, you have like a pool, you have a plane, you right. have a car. What else do you want to do? Nothing. So your life going like this. Mm. Luckily, you have charity. So smart people give people away something of what they think yeah. belongs to the eternity. In the same way, if you can't afford something, I create intellectual property. So yeah. for me, even if I'm not, like Mr. Tito's world, and I don't need to be in this meeting. Right. Because once you call crafted vodka, you hardly expect it to be in multi-million bottles. I know. Thing. Yeah, it's a whole other quality. kind of piece. Once you start thinking, it's all about control of the quality. That's why I can't really make it cheap, I wish. Yeah. On the one hand. On the other hand, I don't want it to be cheap because then the young kids would start drinking and I would feel as a parent very much frustrated that it's not my mission. Yeah. I want only the people who can afford it, not too many, start drinking because well they don't really need to drink a lot once yeah. again it's just to open up their mind their souls about something they could share a drink or a conversation or a film or a book or travel to other country and say well not all russians drink like hell we all thought that russians are f- notorious for dr- right. getting a, a drink to get physical and scare the shit out of anybody not the traditional no, russian that's way. right just it's a, stereotypes. So it's I'm a philosophical thing, yeah. To break the stereotype between nations, people, men, yeah. women. Oh no. So you're in Texas. I want to talk about this Texas for a little bit. So you Please. just arrived this week, I think, right? Just yesterday just night. Just yesterday. What, why Texas? Besides Lamar being a great partner here, has a lot of reach, is a good guy. Why come to Texas? Do we still have some time? Yeah, please. You know where San Antonio is? Uh-huh. Of course. About 10 years ago had a brilliant idea, which was supported by Clear Channel, you know, uh-huh. biggest yep. corporation. Yep. They used to have a museum department, and they were looking for interesting content ideas, like they did the Titanic show. Yep. Amazing. So I was connected through friends of friends with them. We wanted to do an amazing show, 300 years of Russian dynasty, Romanov, caviar, vodka, Fabergé, right, something. Right. Because of the bureaucracy, we couldn't really do it. But I became friend with the content developer from their yeah. company, Peter Detsky, God bless his soul. Once I was doing a National Geographic field production for the Troy film, you know, the Troy uh-huh. civilization. That's right. There was an interesting Schliemann collection, which was taken by Soviet troops from Germany in 1945. Okay. 
and it's kept in the Museum of Art in Moscow Museum and could never travel. Oh. But National Geographic asked me to make a deal with the museum to have access to film it as a trailer oh, wow. to Brad Pitt's uh, Troy film. Yeah. Once I did that show overnight, I started thinking, how about bringing the Russian 3G images, because they couldn't travel physically. Right, right. And I learned that night from a local curator in Moscow during the shoot that the other side of the collection is in Germany, in Istanbul, Turkey, and in Greece, mm -hmm. in Athens. And I talked to him by saying, well, if I have a green light from Clear Channel, because I knew Peter would love that story, right. very artistic guy, used to be. How about making that show, Troy Civilization, with the help of real artifacts? That's right. Yeah. Creating and that super show like Clear Channel used to do with Titanic. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason for Peter to pitch that story to his guys who were in San Antonio at uh, that point. Okay, okay. We came over for the Christmas, like one day introduction. They loved it. They funded our trip. We made a tour in the European countries, made a deal with them to allow us bring the collection together. Yeah. Three months after, when Peter already developed that script for the exhibits to be there, before that, they made a successful story, The Treasures from the Pope Collection in okay. Vatican, which made a lot of money for them. The Clear Channel guys in San Antonio all of a sudden realized now exhibition department doesn't really make money. We, we better continue our venues with the bands, with the, you know, yeah, sports radio TV and all rides. That. So they closed down the museum operations. So we had no chance to make that show. Oh, man. So but this, that was my first experience. What I loved about Texas, back to your question, yeah. when I landed at San Antonio, the message was there. Don't mess with us. We messed back. Right. I felt to myself, well, that's exactly how I look at this yeah. country. I mean, that's right. my own life. Yeah. So once, by pure coincidence, I was introduced to Lamar, and we connected even without meeting each other live. Yeah. I thought, well, there could be something. I never considered Texas to be important part of my vodka. Mm -hmm cross-promotion, but at the same time, I realized, well, first of all, I've never been to Mexico. I'm, I'm intrigued to come as close as I can to yeah. learn more and maybe find friends with, you know, Mexican Absolutely. roots as I yeah. did yesterday yeah. and want to explore and learn more. Yeah. And thinking, what about tequila? There should be something we could marry between Moscow yeah. mule yeah. and tequila cocktails and find an interesting Austin-born baby mm -hmm. with the help of you guys hopefully with the next weekend, yeah. as something which Mexicans, Texans, Russians would be proud of to cross promote. Wow. So for, for me, it's another part of this amazing country, totally unknown to me yet. That's why I'm here to mm -hmm. learn and express myself and find comrades in crime like Lamar to bring the message further to Mexico, amazing. to some other countries in this area and understand what do the people really mean? Don't mess with us. Yeah. Mess, because that my Russian way of understanding this message. So I'm here to learn from you, First from Lamar, hand. this weekend. Yeah. Tell me, guys, what's behind it? Another toast. You can't do it on an empty thing. <laughs> right. That's why I'm saying, I drop. You Keep. have two. You see? Some Americans don't Keeping the glass. You can't do it with empty glass. The then it's amazing. bad luck. Russians yeah. are very superstitious. Explosive. You don't need yeah. to do it because you have to keep creative control on our country. That's, that's, that's a great point. So it's not easy. It's great to have you in Texas. I think you're going to have a good time here. A lot of different places to explore. You know, this vodka, I'm, gonna, I'm the first to say I'm not a huge fan of vodka only because it represents neutrality, right? And odorlessness. The standard stereotype. That's right. Not but what I bring to, up to, to the your table. credit, right? And as a guy who drinks a good amount of stuff, <laughs> this, is, this does have a great texture, right? Like it actually has flavor to it. And it food is, for thought. Yeah. Metaphorically. Absolutely. So There's next a lot morning, to... it won't be hangover. That's another thing I missed. Yeah. With this vodka, even if you drink a bottle, but I always suggest you have some food first. Sure, sure. It's not good for your, you know, chemistry. Right. In the morning, there will be no hangover because it's as pure and smooth as it should be. It's yeah. time distilled. This is the absolute minimum. Right, need. right. And the top quality of the grain. When people tell me, I like generically called grain vodka, I said, hey, 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 something I don't get. It mm. could be corn. Sure. It could be barley. Right. It could be rye, wheat. All rye. Right. Yep. Wheat is like Ivy League of the grain. So mm -hmm. once you are health conscious, I can't use the word organic because you have to no, license no, it no, separately. Yeah, yeah. But that's your stomach and your liver is something you need to be aware of. Absolutely. Uh, especially yeah. when you're my age or age after 35. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young kids, when they don't think about it, they should know that Obamacare cannot afford it, especially in the Trump <laughs> land, right? That's right. So let's be smart and pragmatic. Yeah. You need to drink something which doesn't immediately ruin your system. Right. This is the one. Well, so... This has been, you know, it's an absolute pleasure getting to sit down and chat with you. I feel exposure to so many parts of the world 
this way just through you as like a vehicle right which i probably really would be interested to visit russia at some point i will i would and visit like Eisenstein to. Museum. yeah oh I'll yeah tell you how to get there that'd be Not amazing many people can get i, I would lo- i'd love that i love traveling yeah. and you know again you're you being a conduit kind of connecting me i'm to a that fixer place. that's yeah. all my life i know it's a lovely thing we have to learn more about that but i do have one last question please for you. and i ask all my guests this question and for you i have no earthly idea how you're going to answer this so Let's say you, you're at your favorite place in the world, favorite bar. You're sipping some Zamir vodka. And you can have a conversation with anybody living or deceased. Who would you love to sit and just have a chat and a sip with? Without any second thought, Mahatma Gandhi ah. and JFK. Oh, man. That'd be a hell Maybe of a Maybe at a different timing, not, not <laughs> yeah. immediately. With JFK, the fascination was, if I have time, yeah. my mom, who was a Soviet-born rank-and-file citizen. Yeah. She would be sober, but she would cry over the news that he was assassinated. Yeah. I was like six, eight. I couldn't figure it out. I said, Mom, American president, you've never met him. So why are you like crying? Right. He was a kind man. So since that time, when I started growing up and wanted to know more and more about Marilyn Monroe, his life, yeah. Jackie and uh, Schlesinger, mm-hmm. Schlesinger Commission on Investigation, what really happened? And couldn't find a clue what really happened. Yeah. So that's still an enigma. With Mahatma Gandhi, it's a different story. Totally different man conversation. Want to keep as my guru. Right. With JFK as the man who was born to make that country strong yeah. and, and serious, unlike some people who misrepresented these days. Yeah. Won't give you the names. Probably you know them. Sure. So that would be a terrific combination of JFK as the president of the world, Mahatma Gandhi as spiritual advisor, and Samir Gata with very symbolic easy shortcut ways to make people connected through vodka that's your contribution being the facilitator how about this team don't tell me like zamir Gandhi. you're probably like a daydreamer i mean if mahatma gandhi and jfk were seated here what questions would you ask them by the way now i mean it's, it's at the time so profound i mean it that that in itself deserves an hour this you is know? your homework yeah it's a great for the next time it's a great question Maybe. thank you so much think about it mike guys it's been brilliant. Thanks I'm for making sure it I'm not sure whether you invite me again. I can't afford it. Oh, please. That's yeah. yeah. Bad luck for us. You don't need to oh, you can put it, put it in there. It's just like you can touch it. Like, you know, ah. It's, it's brilliant. You guys have a good time on the road, and Let's we'll see. talk soon, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. So there we have it, Mr. Zamir Gatta, the founder of Peacemaker Vodka, a lovely wheat-based vodka distilled out there in New York. It was a very wild chat the man is filled with passion he's filled with love and such a quest for peace in this recent chapter as he travels the united states promoting his great vodka really a pleasure getting to sit and experience everything that is zamir coming out his lust for the world his lust for learning his lust for teaching and now spreading peace and love no better time for that and as elvis costello says what's so wrong about peace love and understanding. So thanks everybody for listening to Show to V with Mike G. No matter how many Hooli boxes you think will explode with their VR features, or if you're thinking, man, I really can't wait to see Edgar Wright's new film with John Hamm, Jamie Foxx, and so many more, Baby Driver. And no, I'm not getting paid to say that. Just incredibly excited to see it. Please keep dancing.